Hello and welcome to Nitro Talk. Welcome to the Nitro Talk 500 subscriber special. Thank you very, very much, uh, everyone. I really, really appreciate uh, everyone, everyone who watches my videos, everyone who comments, uh, all the interaction, or anyone who just watches. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, 500 subscribers. Um, I'm glad I've made it this far. Uh, hope to keep on going. Uh, but what are we doing today? Um, as uh, as the tradition uh, with my special episodes, as it were, I think I did a uh, 100 subscriber special. Um what was the, uh, did another special episode. It wasn't a subscriber number. It was another thing. I can't think of it anyways. Um, the tradition is, uh, I, I show you something. Yeah, I, I love all my stuff. Uh, um, but you know, some certain things are cooler, rarer, you know, than, than other things. So, uh, as is the tradition on these uh, landmark episodes, uh, as it were, we are going to look today at, uh, I'm pulling one out of the vault today. Uh, this is uh, something that is not only uh, extremely rare, uh, but also very, very unique, uh, has uh, something that I've seen on no other nitro engine. Uh, so, I hope you are excited to see that. Uh, and I guess we'll be doing that here pretty soon. Not, not, uh, not much to it, but to do it. Uh, so, without further ado, should I tease it a little bit longer now? Well, uh, I am going to tease a little bit because I, I kind of got a little setup here uh, to hide uh, the super cool unique thing about this engine. All right. Uh, aside, let, let's put aside the very unique thing for the time being and let's just go with uh, what kind of engine is it? Um, I don't think anyone watching this video maybe if there's anyone i would love if anyone has ever seen one of these please uh say in the comments um any frenchies out there uh, any uh friends from uh across the sea over in uh france uh this is a french made uh well i don't know about made uh the manufacturer they well c calm down now the name on the engine uh, is the name of a french rc company uh, that is not known for nitro engines not known for nitro vehicles um now who made the engine who manufactured the engine i have a guess on that really is just a guess uh, and i would love to hear uh, anyone else's opinions on who may be the uh, maker the manufacturer of this engine all right i've teased it long enough uh, let's go ahead and take our first glance at the T2M M21S. Now, uh, T2M, uh, it is an RC company, does make RC cars. Um, actually, uh, I believe uh, FG, who uh, makes some of the big uh, fifth scale uh, vehicles. Uh, I don't know if T2M is a subsidiary of FG or the other way around or how that works, but they're linked in some way. Um, 
we have here the T2M M21S. Now, uh, all I really, uh, there, there's not much I can tell you for sure about this engine because uh, there, I cannot find uh, any info whatsoever. Uh, no results come back uh, when searching T2M M21S Nitro engine. All right, hold on a sec. I got to interject here for a moment. Uh, while what I just said right there uh, is technically true, uh, it does not tell the whole story. Um, I did go back and do some more research, uh, and the reason nothing comes back for T2M M21S nitro engine is because this isn't a nitro engine. It is a moteur thermique, uh, whatever the French uh, word is for nitro engine. Uh, if you take away the nitro engine, uh, whatever, and just Google T2M M21S, you will get some results. It is all French. Uh, there's no one talking uh, about this as a uh, nitro engine on a um, you know English speaking site. Uh, but there is info out there in French on this engine. Uh, I just wanted to uh, interject here and make sure that um, I try to research the things that I say. I want to make sure I'm given the proper information. Um, so, yeah, there is inf not a whole lot uh, and uh, all in French, uh, but there is a little bit of info on this engine out there. All right, see y'all later. Uh, so, uh, I can only go by what I see here. Now, I don't really, I don't remember whatsoever uh, how I got this. Uh, if I bought it individually, if it came in a lot, I'm pretty sure it wasn't on a vehicle, although that is a possibility as well. Um, the age of it, uh, just uh, going by the carburetor, right, is what I'll try to date it. And that's what's making me think it's pretty early. This is definitely uh, a fairly, not super early, but uh, fairly early style of carburetor. Uh, this has the, uh, what I call the external uh, high speed needle with the O ring right around the shaft, and the needle has a uh, case that it, uh, makes contact with the O ring, the, the outer case there. And uh, it does have the, um, it's a kind of standard uh, link and placement for the link, uh, but uh, it's an add-on link, uh, it's removable link there, so that's a little bit uh, dated. Uh, it also, uh, this is a rubber uh, boot here, and it looks kind of odd, and uh, it looks to fit pretty good, it, like it's the original, I can't say 100%. Um, where else am I going with this? So yeah, uh, I, I'd say uh, back into the late 90s or so, uh, or earlier uh, with this style car, but that's you know just a guess. Uh, we have a an England bearing. What's it? M. I gotta get a good light. M N R S N M B. Maybe. Anyway, it says uh, it's England bearing. Uh, so I, I know you're like, well, what the heck does he got the paper towel on there for? Uh, that is uh, the now, first of all, just as on its own, right? T2M, a nitro engine by T2M. It's uh, now they're uh, full disclosure. No, I couldn't, no, no results came back when I started, and I just did it before uh, starting this video. No results come back for T20, T2M M21S Nitro Engine. Uh, but on YouTube, 
uh, if I search, uh, I will come back with one short of uh, a, it, which says you can't really see the engine, uh, but the title is T2M M21, uh, no S. Um, but while you cannot see the engine very well, uh, you can, I can see uh, that it does not have, uh, as far as I can tell, what I'm covering up here on this one, right? I'm the, the I hope the suspense is killing you because that's what I'm going for here. I'm building up, right? This is, 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 is it, 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 there's going to be some pay dirt. Trust me, we're you about to see something cool here. All right. So on its own, without what's going on up there, uh, a T2M nitro engine, that's a pretty rare thing. Uh, I see very, very, uh, can't find anything. I'm, I'm repeating myself. So let, let, let's go ahead and do it. Um, what is under the paper towel? Um, now, how do we, uh, what, what bolts normally hold in a uh, cooling head? Uh, normally, you got some hexes, 2.5, uh, sometimes 2 millimeter. I hate the 2 millimeter ones. Um, or flatheads, right, generally. Uh, what if I needed to grab like a star bit or something? I mean, that's, you know, screws, you can change the screws. So, you know, if it comes with weird stock screws, right, that's, yeah, that, that's not really anything. Um, so, no, so what, what do we need to uh, unscrew uh, and remove this head here, right? We're going to take a hex, take a flat head. Um, no, we will not. Because there is nowhere to insert a driver. What the heck? Where do you put the screwdriver? Well, you actually put it right there. Or you don't do that and you just grab it and unscrew it. A threaded a threaded cooling head. I I am not aware of another engine. Maybe there is. I'm not sure. It, again, not only if you uh, are familiar with this engine, also if you know another engine with a threaded cooling head, I would love to hear from you. Uh, I do not know of another engine. Now, I assume you, you've actually got three passes through here uh there's two here and this one's kind of in between them so these first this lower one and that lower one uh you hit you would hit glow plug if you try to come through there or that lower one so is this higher one for use to get a good you know torque on it Right, give you some extra leverage. Um, if it is, then what are the other two for? Especially that super low one that hits the uh, glow plug body. I mean, certainly there's no, no glow plug that's going to clear that one. Um, anyways, the M2C M21S with the unscrew... Cooling head. How cool is that? Happy. Ho hope y'all are glad you tuned in to the 500 subscriber special. Uh, because uh, this can't, this can't be something you see every day. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this, a uh, closer look at this thing. Uh, so 
the head uh, comes off easy as pie, right? And there's that part. Now, I don't remember if this, that, not hard. Now, uh, and we're going to be looking at all this. Um, I kind of had to, uh, this, as it sits, is a functional engine ready to run. And I actually uh, would like, I plan to uh, install it and run it and make a running video of the uh, threaded cooling head nitro engine. Uh, but uh, it was, I had, I have kind of had to modify it uh, to get it into a running state. And I will go over uh, all of that here momentarily. Come on now. Uh, rod does not feel like coming off of the crank. It's giving me a hassle. Uh, come on now. There we go. I was trying to uh, be a pain. Now, uh, so, let's go ahead and uh, I'll start. Uh, so, this was a pull start engine, okay? Uh, the way that I got it was it was missing the pull start. Yeah, I don't know why. This was quite a long time ago. I think it's just what was laying around handy. But I threw a a cap head with a, uh, or button head with a 1.5 millimeter. Not the right type of uh, nut for there. But uh, the pinch bolt also is something I had to throw on there. So when I got... Uh, it had this setup right here on the back, okay? Uh, missing a very proprietary uh, pull start. It's kind of like a Kyosho, uh, but the Kyosho one does not fit. Um, so uh, I did not think there was ever going to be a shot that I was going to find uh, that original uh, pull starter for it, uh, seeing as how can't find anything about it. Uh, I then uh, found a back plate that fit. I actually had to shave it a bit uh, for it to clear. It was a little too thick um, and it's kind of rough. I still uh, need to uh, finish uh, smooth it. But I mean, it's, it's smooth. It just looks a little rough, um, but it does uh, fit and seal the back up just fine so uh, and also remove the nub from the uh, crank uh, to make it uh, a bump start uh, yeah so we got a little look at that just kind of like a standard uh, starting shaft and a uh, Kyosho-esque um, back plate set up for a pull starter, but missing the pull starter. So there's that. All right. Uh, let's start with that carb. Now, who uh, is anyone uh, venturing their guess as to the original manufacturer? I do not think that T2M themselves manufactured this engine. Okay. So um, I, uh, and venturing my guess to be Pico uh, because uh, of the Pico style exhaust. Um, 
uh, this era, this back in these days, uh, a lot of Picos, uh, they uh, had this same textured finish and like the Pico name was written, not like the same font, but uh, it's like the same material. It, it gives me the vibe of a Pico. My guess uh, as to the maker is Pico. I know that uh, an English bearing doesn't fit with that. Uh, and a French uh, company doesn't fit with that. But I mean, uh, what else really does? I think I would love to hear uh, anyone else out there uh, as a guess. So, uh, if anyone remembers watching my video on the OPS Speedster Power and its very unique carburetor, uh, this actually has the same uh, style. It's got the uh, hollow, the uh, slide is hollow. Get some good light in there. You see how the bottom... It's it's like coming around. Uh, look uh, through there. You can kind of see the cut. It's solid, but it's got a round cut for the slide to slide through it. It's it's pretty uh, very similar to that OPS Speedster Power carb. Uh, but then you got your uh, external style uh, high speed needle, and you do uh, you do not have a third needle. Uh, that is your second needle because you have no second needle on that side so uh, that would be your low end needle right there uh, another cool thing about this uh, back in this era uh, a carb insulator is pretty unique uh, it appears to be um, almost just like a plastic kind of primitive looking but uh, it's holding up after all these years, and it does uh, pinch and hold in there good. So, sorry about that. I don't know what's up with the, uh, I had to get the focus right. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, the insulator right there. Again, it did not have any pinch bolt. Uh, so, I found a pinch bolt that fits and a nut and just threw that together. This was years ago. Uh, and I just kind of, uh, I'm, I think I did this when I first got it and I got the idea for doing the back plate. Uh, and then like a year or two after that, I did the back plate. And then that was a couple of years ago. Now it's been kind of chilling. Uh, so you got the two uh, textures there, the, the rough finish and the super fine finish, even uh, fins right next to each other, rough fins and fine fins. Um, Got, uh, it's got decent, uh, dividing cuts inside and not, uh, looking good. It does have a, uh, indexing pin, uh, for orientation of the sleeve, uh, that get a look down in there. You see how it is threaded there. So that's the cooling head with the threads on the outside, uh, and then threads in there and just sits on there and screws right on in. Uh, kind of a, uh, doesn't look like a standard rear bearing, but it is nice and smooth. Got that England in the front again. Um, it's well made. It is certainly well made, as we'll get into uh, the rest of the parts here. Um, very, very well made, actually. Um, so that's the crankcase. Uh, and since we already kind of looked at the head, let's go ahead and do that. Now, it is a uh, very hefty chunk of aluminum. It's, speaking of hefty chunks of aluminum, uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. Um, it's, I wish it didn't. Yeah. It's, it's certainly not in bad shape, but uh, I, I'd like everything of mine to be perfect, you know, of course. Um, there's that uh, threaded section again. And so, again, two passes through, all the way through, there and there. And then uh, opposite them, uh, perpendicular 
to them is this single pass through that uh, is in between those two. So this is the bar in between those two and it, Oh, it's a touch lower, but it's still in between them. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm assuming you use that, you know, put give you uh, some leverage, right, to get a real good torque on it, tighten it down. Um, but again, that low one would certainly, I mean, I guess you don't really need to tighten it down if the no glow plug in it. Don't make sense. Who knows? Maybe I'm missing something simple. That happens often. All right. We looked at those. Uh, Backplate is uh, made in Taiwan. I believe it, what was this off of a, uh, not a Super Tiger, that's Japan. Uh, Thunder Tiger is Japan, is Taiwan, right? Uh, that's the backplate. Uh, it comes with three paper thin uh, aluminum shims, 3.1s. Where the heck did the other one go? There definitely were three. I'll find it. Oh, yeah, it is. Holy crap, look at there. That thing was so thin. I didn't see it, number one and two. Barely touched it. I hate that when they... But so thin, they bend right back. Anyway... Uh, so that's like the uh, the head button there. I like the head button. It is the head button. Uh, got this plug in there because it needs a super long plug. Uh, I got the thinnest uh, shim that I have in there. Longest plug, thinnest shim. And it still is sitting down in there a little bit. Um, that's the uh, head button. Pretty pretty small crank is uh pretty uneventful uh it is not eh, it actually looks like it maybe opened up a touch you know opened up uh, at the back but no fang uh and our uh, no shark fin on our leading edge trailing edge both solid do got a little cut behind the uh, crank pin there that's about it. And then I was, I noticed this got a little wonk right there on the, the leading edge. Let's see if you can get, see how it's kind of cut. Little, little miss right there. Come on now, focus. See it right there. A little, went a little too far. I mean, that would have been better, actually, if he kept it all the way down like that, nice and thin. But anyways, yeah, not uh, not a super high-performance crank, uh, definitely. All right, now, always love the meat and potatoes, right? Uh, the, the thing that I noticed about this piston, and I don't think I've seen this before. Now, that's a, that's a really meaty... Uh, rod, right? That that is a meaty rod. But look at this. That piston is solid. Usually, uh, that's a cut out a lot more. Um, that's got some big solid chunks uh, in there. That is a, a very heavy uh, piston. Um, yeah, a lot, lot of metal still in there. Uh, usually that's shaved a lot. Most of that's shaved out. Uh, but yeah, that's a uh, really chunky uh, piston there. Uh, Non-domed. Uh, looks really, really nice. Looks really nice shape. Um, uh, where are they going for a knife edge? Um, I mean, I think you almost got to give it to them on technicality because they do have the... The corners cut there, so even though that is pretty flat, um, I don't know. Is it technically a knife edge? What do you think? Um, nice and meaty, uh, thick, very, very again, very well made. Look at the uh, uh, patterns. I, I noticed that uh, from you know cutting the that aluminum down there, it makes those nice uh, round 
patterns there on the aluminum. Um, not not a whole lot. Um, not a whole lot exciting to see. It's it's a pretty basic uh, three port here. Uh, although it is uh, does have some kind of unique shapes. So are we not focusing? There we go. Uh, our exhaust port uh, is a little bit unique. Let me put a finger there behind it. Am I not focusing? You know what? Let me get get my blocker. Make sure we're getting focused here. All right. So uh, it is kind of a unique uh, shape. See, like the uh, on the edge there. It's kind of like it got a round in the corner, and then it comes up and then rounds down. Uh, not crazy unique, but little different big very big exhaust port huge exhaust port um the shirley ports and the boost port all have like a rounded look to me uh, they look a little more rounded uh than a standard uh standard uh ports most of the time they'll they'll have like rounded corners uh but they'll be kind of squared squared with rounded corners these that's like a whole round end right there it's like uh and even the boost port, which is kind of, it's got a little ramp there on it. And it's huge. Uh, intake port is, is huge. Uh, very big intake port. Uh, again, generally port uh, kind of rounded there. Uh, and I like that chrome uh, bevel on the bottom there. Uh, that looks cool as heck. I like that, how that whole uh, bottom of it on the outside is chromed that's cool it's very this is very nicely chromed by the way this sleeve you can tell a good chrome job and this has got a very nice chrome job on it um but yeah kind of a simple three port uh but pretty kind of cool looking big big ports a lot of air can flow i think this thing will be uh, a runner i really do uh, but only time will tell i'm certainly I uh, would like to uh, get this thing fired up. Uh, so, 500 subscribers. Thank you so, so much for joining me, for subscribing, for the interaction, uh, for just being super cool people, nitro lovers like myself. Thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, if you're interested in seeing a running video of this, let me know. Um, I'll see y'all again very soon with more Nitro. Take care.